Hello Goblins, it's Chris Aldrich Pipes with a review for Gareth Hogarth uh, Perique Flake. It's this is kind of interesting. It's a straight vapor. Um, but not in the style of the kind of the lighter ones like Solani 633 or something like that. This, funnily enough, because I was freaking dark, um, Dunhill Dark Flake last time, is very similar. Very similar. Okay, so I'll do this review and then I'm going to a few bits to show you. All right. Okay. So it um comes as these quite nice flakes. As you can see, they're kind of loose, but um, more coherent than the um, than the Germain's flake. So. Somewhere between the those lovely Dunhill flakes that are, or the McBaron flakes that are kind of perfect, and then the the Germain's flake at the other end, which is barely a flake at all. These kind of like sit somewhere in between. Almost, it's like broken flake, but they're still just about hanging together. But here, rather than the focus being on the sort of grassy Virginias, the sweetness, this is the the deeper, toasty, spicy, a little spicy, uh, but not, you know, uh, like dark fruit. That's where it's going. It's stronger than Dark Flake. Um, not in the flavour, but you can sort of sense it has more strength. But it's a really nice sort of full-bodied smoke. Um, very subtle sweetness, like, you know, like a molasses sweet sweetness, like a, you know, like a treacle sweetness, um, rather than like, you know, um, like a honey or something like that. It's a, it's a very subtle sweetness, but it is there. I would say the Perique element is the dominant force here. It's the um, Virginias that are taking the back seat to the Perique. That's my, my feeling on it. I was a little worried about smoking this one for the video because uh, the the flakes are quite moist, more moist than I would like. I did actually spend a moment, like five, ten minutes, drying them out on a, on a sheet of kitchen towel. And I don't normally do that. But uh, I thought, I'm not sure about this, I've got the feeling it's going to go out on me. But so far it's smoking quite well. I will say it feels like, it feels really clean.
for all its sort of strength, it's kind of, you sort of taste it and exhale and it kind of leaves. Um, it's like, like Latakia blends, they kind of like, they cling to you, if you know what I mean. This kind of, it feels really clean. I suppose which is more a characteristic of like Virginia blends, isn't it? You kind of, you know, after you smoke them, they kind of like seem to dissipate quite quickly, um, rather than hang around in the in the atmosphere. It is a very nice toasty vapor. In fact, um, if I'd have known about this one before. I might not have been so worried about having Dark Flake return. This is a very decent replacement for Dark Flake. How odd that I hadn't tried it sooner. Apparently they had a similar one earlier called Louisiana Flake, um, but it has a, it's a vapour with a bit of a topping to it, I believe, to sort of amp up the sweetness. I'm actually just going to have to deal with this. It's just getting a little bit clogged at the bottom. I wonder if that's to do with the dampness of the tobacco. Hmm. Better. From the look of the pipe cleaner, possibly could do with a little bit more drying out, which is irksome to me. But it's really nice. If you are a, a dark flake fan, um, then the, the Perique flake is a solid replacement, since we don't know when Peterson are going to bring Dark Flake back. How odd that I was smoking that last week, and all of a sudden I try a tobacco that is a good replacement. Serendipitous. Alright, well that one's just made it into my rotation. <laughs> Strange times we live in. Have I said, said that before? Um, I actually was waiting for another um, tobacco delivery from the States. I mentioned it in a video or two ago. Um, and I'd started to become a little concerned about where it, where it was. It, it had been a while since it was posted. We finally looked at the tracking and it's mental. It's just been going round the houses in the States. Um, hopefully it's left the States now, and hopefully I'll have it sometime this week coming, but I guess it's just everything's gone mental. Another little resin test. It's okay. I'm trying to uh, get it so that the, well, the, the technique involved tends to produce a lot of white, no matter what colours you put in. White falls out, more often than not. And that's not ideal. Um, for what I have in mind. But it means I'm having to tweak what I'm doing. And at the moment I'm sort of flying blind. But give me another couple of weeks. And a few, I've got a few ideas on the go. Right. Pipes.
I showed you where the pipes were last time, they were in a very early stage. This is the one that's going to be sandblast now. That's the tortoiseshell stem. You can see it now. That's going to get sandblasted. Looking very good. That one's a commission, so it won't be available. But here's the finished smooth that is now up on the Etsy site. So if you want it, you can go grab it there. Look at the grain on that. That's the amber stem. Plateau rim. Oh yeah. There she is. So I'm pleased with that combination of the amber stem. I think it works quite well. Very pleased. A really lovely little smooth. I say little, seven and a half inches long. The chamber is two and a half inches deep. So, I mean, this is a solid reading pipe. You can go for a big book. All right, that's it for now. I'll be back next week. Oh, Monday will be chapter three of the case of Charles X Awards. So if you are free, 11 p.m. GMT, join me then. Till then, take it easy. I'll see you soon. Ta-da.